Yeah, that's what I've heard, about 1,200, 1,500. Yeah, but ours, well, 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 ours is a public institution. In London, it's very controversial. <laughs> sure. Sustainability to me is all about science and engineering at one part, but it's also about the whole concept of how it's involved in society, and our students need to know that as they're working on the science. I think you need to decide what it is you really want to change, and then you have to get the people to buy into it. So when I said it was a form of communist government, it wasn't dictatorship, but there was a sense we need to do something, so very clear governance, and then saying, now let's get everybody to contribute and to buy into the idea. This is why it's so important that the scientists find out the facts. Um, in Britain, we had it at the time of Fukushima, with obviously enormous news, real concern. And everybody read about the six nuclear power stations uh, at Daichi, which is one of the sites on that coast, which was hit by the earthquake and then the tsunami. What in Britain they didn't say was that within about, maybe it's 18 kilometers, there are another four nuclear power stations. They were built in the 1980s as opposed to the 1970s. They're still pressurized water reactors. Um, absolutely no damage. Was that reported in the headlines? No. And so then we have the reaction in other parts of the world and we've seen that Germany is discussing maybe not having nuclear power anymore. Um, it seems to me a very much an overreaction. We need to know the facts. I think we need to develop nuclear power. I don't think we have a choice. Yes, I support it because we have now 7 billion people on the Earth. We have a finite amount of uh, fossil fuels and they also do damage with the CO2. We have to do a number of things. We have to find a way of having less destructive energy. And that is going to take us time. We have all the options of the renewables, but we have not yet got enough ways of getting the energy with renewables to be able to cope with the current demand and the future demand over the next 20 years. I think we're going to have to combine wind, solar, uh, using turbines underneath the surface of water that is flowing, so in uh, tidal areas where you could get uh, uh, energy in that way. I mentioned geothermal. Geothermal can work anywhere. So the next generation of solar cells we'll find probably are more efficient. The big question though is not just how do we capture the energy, how can we get it, it's also how can we store it. So material science can help in health in that way, we can help in energy. We can help in the design of products, either for lighting or for communication, and they could be combined, or for purifying water. That's material science, saving the world again, giving us new opportunities, giving a different way of doing things.